as i mentioned in my previous video references that will be submitted for your university applications as well as your job applications plays a vital role and therefore it should be given the needed attention and all the seriousness it deserves If you are a returning viewer, thank you for coming back and I hope you are enjoying my content. If this is the first time you are meeting, my name is Emmanuel and I am on a mission to assist you to realize your full potential through academic scholarships, job opportunities and as well as to impact lives through charity projects. I have received a ton of questions on references and so I'll be using this video to answer most of the questions. Probably your question may be answered as well. So stick and stay with me to the end of this video, I promise to share with you some bonus tips that made my request for academic references quite easier let's begin with some general questions about references the first question i received was who can i request to be my referee or who should i consider my referee and all this list i'm about to share with you can be your referee or you can request for reference letter from this individual one is your academic tutor or your lecturer it can be your current or your previous next is your project or dissertation supervisor if you are a nurse or in a healthcare profession your clinical supervisor or your immediate line manager if you are currently working it should be whoever you report to the reference letters should give good accounts about you and therefore whoever you are asking to be your referee or whoever you are asking to send in these reference letters should be someone who is willing and would be able to give good accounts about you the next question is how long should your referee have known you for and in my honest opinion i think your referee should have known you for a minimum six months to a year and maybe more than a year why is this important? I feel six months should be enough time for a referee to have known you and be able to give a good account of you. Next question is how many people can I request to be my referee? And my answer will be as many as possible. Because some university and job applications may request for a specific number of reference letters ranging from two to four and therefore you should have enough to be able to request for reference letters at any point in time. Also you may not want to bother those same referees every now and then. For instance if you have four to seven referees you may be able to request for reference letters from them at any time and they may not feel bothered because you may have options to select which of them you are requesting for the reference letters and it wouldn't be the same as having only two referees which you are going to be requesting for reference for every application you make next question is how would the reference letters be requested for the request for reference letters for my referees in all my applications have not been the same there are varied ways institutions and universities request for reference letters and as they may ask you to provide details of your referees you should ensure you know the full name of your referee their phone number, their email address. Most universities or institutions would prefer an institutional email apart from the university or the organization requesting for these details. There may be an option for you to submit a copy of your reference letter if you already have it from your referee. You should be mindful since you can't make any changes to the letter you have already. Sometimes an invite link will be sent to your referees for them to head over to a specific portal to fill in some question that has been asked about you. Other times, some institutions may provide some specific reference form and this form will be sent to your referees for them to complete and return it to the institution. The last question before we move on to talk about what should be included in your reference letter is how long should I contact my referee for reference and my answer will be even before you begin any application you should contact your referee and let them know that you are about to start an application. This will not take them by surprise when they finally receive a request for reference letter in their inbox. It's time for us to talk about the contents of your reference letter what should be included and what should be avoided. Hope you stand a chance of getting that admission or the job you are making an application for. It is a formal letter and therefore it should have a heading, an introduction, a body and a conclusion. If possible, the heading should include your name, for example, letter of reference for Emmanuel entry. This alone would help you to stand out from the rest of the reference letters they are going to be receiving that will have headings like to whom it may concern. If this is a university application you're making, your introduction should contain your name, the specific course you're applying for, the specific department as well as the name of the university. The body of this letter should then contain your academic performance, some research experience and some skills that your referee can comment on, your general conduct, some volunteering activities you have engaged yourself 
in as well. You are afraid to then forget to give examples of when you have excelled or you have succeeded in some modules or some activities. In the conclusion, they should give reasons why they think you are a good fit or the perfect candidate for the course you are applying for and therefore the university has no choice than to give you the admission. What if this application you are making is a job application and not a university admissions application? This is how you go about it. Same format as that of the university admissions application. Your referee should include your name in the heading. When it comes to the introduction, they should include your name, the specific job you are applying for, the organization or the institution you are making the application for as well. In the body of the letter, they can then talk about your job performance, some essential skills you've demonstrated during the time you were with them or you're working for them. If you're currently working with them, they can talk about some achievements you have gotten from the job so far. If they have details of the job that you are applying for which you can provide to them, they can also mention some transferable skills that they think it would be useful in your new job. I promise to share with you some bonus tips. And so for staying with me throughout this video, take your notebook and your pen and write these tips down. Number one, since you are going to need a reference letter someday in your career, make sure you put up a good behavior wherever you find yourself and ensure to give on 20 percent for everything that you have been taxed to do remember someone is always watching from a distance if you are currently at the university or college make sure you build a healthy relationship between you and your tutors or your lecturers and if you're an introvert like myself maybe it's time for you to begin to answer some questions or to ask some questions in class ensure to have good grades as well this would make it easier when you contact that lecturer or you finally request for that lecturer to be your referee another tip is to ensure you confirm the current position of your referee it may be your referee has left the organization or they have been awarded a new position and that should reflect in the details you submit to the institution finally avoid submitting old reference letters that has been given to you by your referees every reference letter you submit should have a current date thank you for watching this video and see you in the next one